Since the beginning of time, the ocean has been in the process of changing. However, never as fast as today. How does this affect life in the sea? Plants and animals that need to adapt over and over again? The answer lies on the sea floor. Here the history of our planet is stored in deep layers of mud. Creatures from long ago have sunken to the depths of the ocean. Their fossils reveal traces of past events, of climate change and mass extinction. To uncover and to understand these traces, scientists penetrate deep into the sea floor. They lift Earth's history on board, meter for meter. Yela Baima belongs to those who study the archive on the seafloor. A biogeochemist is looking for a very special witness of past ages, the single-celled foraminifera. We assume that the, um, the paleo representatives of, for instance, foraminifera have behaved very similar as uh, the living uh, counterparts today. If you assume that they respond in a similar way to change in climate, change in uh, environment, um, then we can use those changes and draw conclusions with respect to change in the past. The sediment cores at the Alfred Wegen Institute give Jelle Baima first clues. 250,000 years of Earth's history stretch in front of him. With the help of the different colors, he can detect different ages at first glance. The lighter parts uh, show you that there are that the ocean had at that time circumstances that were favorable for organisms like uh, foraminifera or diatoms and therefore the biogenic content of the core is, is larger. That makes it uh, look brighter. On the contrary, if you see the, uh, the dark parts, we know that the conditions in that time were not favorable for these organisms. To examine these single-celled organisms more closely, the scientists need to sample the core. For the human eye, the fossilized shells look rather unimpressive. Underneath the microscope, however, they unfold first hints of how the living conditions in the ocean were during their lifetime. Another thing that you could look at is the thickness of the foraminiferal shells. Uh, under alkaline conditions, so when the ocean is, uh, has a higher pH, the shells are um, thicker. And when the um, ocean is less favorable for carnet producing organisms, then the shells will become thinner. As can be seen with these sea butterflies, here their shells are clear and well preserved. But if Yelabaima looks at younger samples, he finds opaque and broken shells. He suspects that more acidic water has taken its toll on them. In order to investigate this, the scientists need a mass spectrometer. The instrument can analyze the fossils after they have been dissolved in acid. The plasma within the spectrometer breaks the fossils down into their single ions. Now the team can identify which chemical elements were available when the foraminifera built their shells. But in order to correctly analyze these samples, one more step is necessary. Well, to understand the geochemistry, you have to uh, culture living foraminifera, grow them under certain conditions, and then analyze the changes in the geochemistry because of your experimental conditions. He therefore needs to catch living foraminifera. If they drift in the upper water layers, divers can easily collect them, but the organisms also live on the sea floor in depths no diver could ever reach. Unless they lie in the mud of the Wadden Sea. There they can be picked up almost directly outside the Institute. Back in the lab, the scientists subject the foraminifera to different tests. These will help the team to interpret the encoded information on the sea floor.
After one week, the scientists can spot first changes. Underneath the microscope, parts of the shells illuminate in green. The color reveals how much the foraminifera have grown over the past days. But what do all these test results tell them? There is a saying that the, the past is the key to the future, which means that, that by looking at the past in the archives of the ocean, we can learn about our future. Um, one of the most important things for society right now, and I think um, that's also one of, my, uh, one of my drivers, is to understand what this carbon perturbation, so the change in the carbon cycle that we are, that we are currently uh, doing, um, what does that mean for the future? Is the ocean going to acidify more? What's going to happen with, uh, with climate and so on? The sediments, therefore, don't just hold the answers to what happened in the past. The organisms of past ages also tell scientists a lot about what could happen in the future.